G'day friends. Welcome to Stillness, a four part beginner's meditation course. <clears throat> this particular video is an introduction because when we get into the actual content for stillness, the four parts, um, I want to draw, dive straight into the content and you know, get straight into learning to meditate and practicing together. So before we do that, there's a couple of ground rules and principles and things that we can go over now in this introduction so that when we get started, we're straight into it. So the four sessions are going to be how to still the breath, how to still the mind and the thoughts and distractions, how to still our emotions, and finally how to bring deep stillness to the heart. So um, I'm really stoked you're here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it really warms my heart to know that people like yourself want to learn to meditate or continue their practice um, and that you're sharing your precious time with me and us here at King's Meditation and Mentoring. So just firstly, I just want to say thank you. So this course is designed for and dedicated to uh, beginners. So a beginner might be someone who's never meditated before. A beginner might be someone who's been meditating for a little while but has been using an app and doesn't know how to establish or conduct their own practice. Or a beginner might be someone who just hasn't practiced with us before because the approach to meditation is quite unique as we'll get into when the course starts. Um, so in this little ramble that I'm going to go into now as an introduction, there's a few things I want to cover. Um, you know, what is meditation? For some of you who might not have meditated much before, uh, why stillness? What is stillness and why is this thing even called stillness? And then a few principles for our time together, like how and where are we going to practice? How do I sit? Um, how do I stay awake? And just some general things like that. So um, I've got my computer here, a few notes that I can read over to make sure I don't forget anything important that I want to share with you. I've got some water. I've got a cuppa and I'm ready to sit back and, and have a chat. So, first things first, my friend, um, what is meditation? Let's start with the big one. What is meditation? Let's break it down really simply by saying uh, meditation is two things. Firstly, meditation is a state that you can arrive at. Um, you know, when I spent time learning meditation in India, you'd often go to the old dogs and ask them what's meditation. And they would comically wiggle their head and say, ah, meditation is non-doing. What do you mean? But what is it? Nope, nothing. Meditation is the art of non-doing. Non-doing, what do you mean? You know, and what these old dogs were uh, alluding to or pointing to is that meditation is a state of being. Um, you know, meditation is a state that we arrive at through certain practices, a state of psychological absorption where, um, you know, William Blake said, whatever we behold, we become. So it's about consciously choosing something that you want to align and fully merge with and therefore become and that psychological, physiological absorption into something a sense of unity is a state of meditation. When you're completely engrossed in and present with what you're doing, you might experience the state of meditation. And then at the same time, meditation is obviously a set of tools and practices and processes, like using the breath consciously is a form of meditation, breath work, uh, visualizing, affirming, doing certain mental techniques are all meditation as well. So funnily enough, we can describe meditation as the path, the tools, the processes that help us arrive at meditation. Meditation helps us arrive at meditation. Um, you know, the practices that help us cultivate and conjure stillness help us to arrive at inner stillness and peace. So meditation is both of those things at once. 
It's a state that in any given meditation we might feel, or maybe not, but it's the process and the tools nonetheless. Um, so yeah, that is how I describe meditation, the process and the state. Um, and now stillness. Whew. When I look at the world, it's very evident to see that we spend a lot of time avoiding stillness. It's a busy, turbulent world. And, you know, I was listening to a podcast the other day, one of Hannah's and my favorite podcasts. It's called uh, Pinch My Salt. And it's a surf podcast, a comical surf podcast. And one of the co-hosts, Cousin Ryan on the podcast was saying, that he listens to music or a podcast every night to get to sleep. And they're kind of joking, saying like, no, no, not silence, anything but silence, you know, anything but stillness. And he's saying he always keeps busy, he's always doing, 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 doing. And it's such a norm for our culture to just keep on moving, keep on doing, keep the noise happening. But we have to ask at some point, what am I scared or afraid of? What am I running from? Because if we don't give any time to silence and stillness, life just keeps building and building and growing and accumulating within us until at some point we explode. So stillness is necessary now more than ever because of the busyness and the turbulence and the distractibility and the stimulation of life. Stillness is when the body, the mind, the nervous system, all can rest. And what happens when we rest? There's a natural restoration and rejuvenation that happens through our body-mind system. And even better than that, accumulated stresses, the things we pick up and carry, the pressures, the overwhelm, the anxieties, the accumulated stresses that we pick up along our trail can be released. So you guys know what REM sleep is? REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, is when you first drop into deep sleep and your brain starts to produce dreams as a means by which accumulated energy and stress can be released, let go of, processed and integrated. It's a beautiful design. That's why we need sleep because it's where we can release stresses. And if we don't, they just build and build and build and cause more destruction and end up having what's called um, trait anxiety, where it becomes a part of our personality. And what's really interesting to know is that meditation has been scientifically proven to be more effective in releasing accumulated stresses than even deep sleep. And so when we put ourselves in a certain state where our brainwave activity reduces, where we're present and alert, but disidentified from emotions, thoughts, and um, energy moving within the body-mind system, it can arise and pass and release in a really beautiful, effortless, and somewhat passive fashion. And that's what I wanna share with you guys, how to do that, how to tap into the most effective way to release stress, stress and therefore restore and rejuvenate your body-mind system. And so there's a huge amount of healing that can happen through simply meditating, um, in, including releasing anxiety and stress and things like that. Like I had a client once who, um, it was so interesting, about once a month, this client would have a um, a blackout where she would just get dizzy and kind of fall over and faint and when we talked about it and broke it down she said that just before she would faint the days leading up to it and especially the hours leading up to it she would feel a growing of pressure like the overwhelm and intensity of life would build and build and build like a pressure cooker. And it just needs to, have you ever cooked with a pressure cooker? 
where it builds up and up and then it starts to whistle because the pressure has to find its way out. So the fainting was her whistle. And this would happen clockwork once a month. And she would say when she woke up from fainting, she felt amazingly calm and refreshed and like a huge weight was just off her shoulders. So I said, well, that's really cool. Fainting works for you, but what if there's another way? And we started talking about breath work and meditation and using the mind in creative and productive ways to, on a daily basis, release the accumulated pressure. And then it wouldn't get to this point where there's an explosion or a maladaptive way in which the pressure would get released. And sure enough, this wonderful client, after she learned these really simple skills, um, no longer had the problem of fainting. You know, but she had to take it upon herself to do the practices, if not daily, every other day to make sure that she was looking after herself. Um, coming back to stillness, coming back to stillness. So there's not only, you know, physiological and psychological benefits, but there's something beautiful and spiritual about stillness as well. When the mind becomes a little more quiet, our attention gets less absorbed in our self-critical judgmental thinking and our attention and our awareness can be pushed up against the back of our eyeballs and our ears, you know, like we can be truly present with the world around us. We can be deeply engaged, not distracted by our own inner insecurities or judgments. It's a beautiful thing to fall still and feel truly present. Not only that, when you become still, you can hear the subtle whispers of your true needs. You can hear the inkling of your own heart. You can hear the, the guidance and the design that is inherent to who you are whether you see that as a process of nature or something God-given. Stillness is a precursor to being able to commune with and relate with something deeper. And you see people who have a long-term practice of being able to get still and meditate on the daily, it seems like their life is enriched by something deeper within the core of who they are. And that's what I want for you guys. And it's it's an ongoing practice, but it's something that is accessible and uh, doable for us all. Quick story just popped in my head. Have you ever, um, or did you ever when you were young, have a parent or parents who would say, if you get lost, uh, you stay still and we'll come and find you. That's what my mum used to say if we went to the shopping centre. She'd say, if you find yourself lost, if you notice that you're lost, um, don't come trying to find me. You just stay still and I'll find you. Did your parents say that? You know, and, and also mum used to say it when we went to like a theme park where there was thousands of people. You stay still and I'll find you. Your only job is to be still. And I love that as a metaphor, thinking, okay, if I'm going batshit crazy, trying to find and hustle after the things I want and the things I'm seeking and the things I think I need to do, I'm probably just gonna run in circles and run the opposite way from where the stuff I truly need actually is. Um, many, many years ago, when I was traveling around Australia, I uh, spent some time up in the northwest of Australia in an indigenous community and uh, with these dear friends of mine. And one day we were out spearfishing. And um, I didn't have a spear gun, just a hand spear. And at that stage I hadn't done much hand spearing. And we went out and um, the the young fellow who took me spearing, he had a complete different strategy to me. I had uh, mask and snorkel and flippers and you know all the gear. All he had was a pair of speedos, 
or budgie smugglers, we call them here in Australia, and uh, and just a mask. And I dove in the water and went swimming around trying to chase fish. And I couldn't get any. I would see a fish and try to swim after it with haste. See another fish, try to swim after it. And they're, of course, they're so quick, they were darting and dashing and getting out of my way. They'll see me coming a million miles away. His strategy was he just found a rock that it was deep uh, with a deep channel next to it where fish would be going past. He didn't have a snorkel. He'd just wait and look underwater, come up for a berth and just hold on to the edge of this rock with his gun. And he would just wait. He wouldn't even move. He'd just stay completely still and wait till a fish came to him and pop. And he was laughing at me. Look at this idiot. What's he doing out there chasing fish? And I said, how come you're getting so many fish and I'm getting none? And he, uh, he came to me and said, come over here. I'll show you something. And he said, this is the way we do it here. He said, firstly, have some clarity about what you want. What are you actually seeking? Why are you hunting? And we talked about it and realized that um, their community was so gracious in taking me in and I wanted to get some fish to feed not only the family I was staying with, but their neighbors. And also there was no shop out there, so we literally had to get fish and things like that to, to eat. And um, he was saying, okay, so know what you want and ask for it. Ask the spirit hey, uh, if there's any fish that you know want to participate in this and are willing to give their life for the benefit of the community then. And he said, once you have know what you want and you ask for it, hold your attention on it and you will know, you will know when it's time to take the shot. Don't waste time taking shots, you'll know. And so I came back to myself and I had this little moment of intention setting or prayer, recognizing what it is I really want. And I sat with him in the edge of the channel. I took my flippers off, I held onto the rock and where I was hanging onto the rock, this current was going past. I could see big fish and I think, is this the fish? And nah, that's not the one. Is this the fish? Nah. He said, I'd feel it. Okay, let me be patient, let me see. Is this the one? No. And at some point, this big sweet lip snapper swam up right towards me. I could see it eyeballing me as if it was swimming right to me. And it swam in front of me and came side on right in front of me and my whole body tingled and said, this is the one. And I pulled back the rubber on my gun and it was like time completely stood still. And then, phew, and then the moment the spear went through the fish, time switched back on and I was into action mode. I had, it was such a big fish, I had to pin it to the bottom and wait for it to settle down before I finally brought it up and, and took it to the rest of the crew. And um, they were all laughing and rejoicing. Finally, the white fella got one. And um, it was a beautiful moment to realize that even in something like hunting, the power of harmony and the mind plays a role in that. But even more so, how much time do I spend in my life uh, rushing around in ineffective, ineffective, inefficient action? I might have good intentions, but I'm getting nowhere. But it was the stillness and the clarity of what I was after that brought the results. So stillness brings effective action. I feel like the more still we get and settled and grounded and calm, the more we can realize the best course of action to take in alignment with our best interests and the best interests of others. That kind of clarity, that pungent, heartfelt, purpose-driven clarity is only born out of stillness. Is only born out of silence when all of our own craziness settles down so we can hear what's necessary and true. So there's so many levels to the benefits of stillness and why I specifically wanna focus on stillness now in this time of life, but also when I'm working with people that are newer to meditation because a little bit of daily stillness can change everything. So, 
We know what meditation is, at least within the context of this four-part training. We know why we want to work with stillness, at least a little bit, and we'll further explore that as we go on. Now let's get to the practicalities of this particular um, course a little more. So, how and where to practice. All of the uh, lectures, so there'll be four one-hour talks, one about the breath, one about the mind, one about emotions, one about the heart, four one-hour talks, and um, coupled with each of those one-hour talks will be a meditation practice. So your mission is to space it out over four weeks, watch a talk, do the meditation practice, and then practice that meditation for seven days. And the reason I want to practice it for seven days, like if you did it, you could do the whole course in four days, right? But none of it would truly integrate and land in your experience. Like you want to be able to take what you learn out into the world and let it sink into your bones and have a daily ongoing experience of that particular practice and philosophy. So watch a video. What really helps is to pick a day. So say I'm going to watch the videos on a Wednesday. I'm going to do the meditation. I'm going to do it every day until the next Wednesday. Then I'll watch the next video. Um, and what I recommend is at least during the course, this is only 28 days, at least during the process of this course, practice every day. Meditate every day. Make a commitment to yourself. After 28 days, you can, you know, do what you want after that, or you can rethink about whether you want to meditate every day. But all I'm saying is for the duration of this course, if you want to give it a good go, you want to see what meditation can do in your life every day. A little bit of meditation every day, the consistency is what counts, is way more important than doing a three-hour practice once a week. A little bit every day is what changes us. I've, I know that for sure. So a little bit every day. Um, so that's how we practice uh, or go about the sessions. Um, <sighs> where? What I recommend is that you have a quiet space that's as distraction free as possible. Of course, put your phone on silent or better don't even take it into the meditation room with you. If you're meditating outside, do your best to make sure there's minimal flies, mosquitoes, ants and sounds because of course it's nice to meditate in nature and of course it's nice to um, be able to meditate anywhere and when you've been practicing for a little while you get better and better at that for sure but what we want to do with the intention on stillness is slowly start to internalize our attention into more quiet places and every time there's something that could be avoided that's a distraction that pulls your attention in a million different directions it only makes it harder and as i say the more you practice, you kind of look for those little challenges. Can I stay centered, stable, and still, regardless of the distractions? But when you're learning, you want to make it easy for yourself. So be in a nice, quiet, calm um, environment, whether that's you know a bedroom or um, a room in the house where you can shut the door and communicate with your family members and say, okay, I'm on this mission for the next few weeks and I'd really love your support. This time each day, I'm going to meditate. Um, can you look after the kids or make sure you don't disrupt me or whatever it is? So get out ahead of it, take responsibility, organize your life around it so there's time each day for you to um, do this wonderful practice. And so when you're thinking about the where, um, yeah, somewhere quiet, somewhere as distraction free as possible. Of course, sometimes life happens, you'll be meditating and a kid will come in with an emergency, you know, an emergency like um, I spilled the milk or what, you know, whatever it might be. And you just got to address life as it comes, but just do your best. Um, and then there's the bit of how to sit. You know, a lot of people who are starting meditation think, oh, I'm going to have to sit in some particular way. And this is not true. All I recommend is that you sit rather than lay down, because if you lay down, um, you get tired, fall asleep, and your mind will probably get a little bit lazy. There's... In fact, a, uh, what they now recognize is that when you sit up straight with your spine long, it actually sends a message to a part of your brain. And right now off the top of my head, I can't remember the part of the brain, 
but it sends a message to the part of your brain saying, hey, be alert. And in meditation, it's such a fine balance. You wanna be like your body's in a state of deep sleep and rest, but your awareness is alert. So sitting up straight helps you to be deeply relaxed, but still mindful. So that's the balance we need to find. Sitting up helps with that. And so however and wherever you sit, whether you're sitting cross-legged on the ground or whether you're sitting in a chair like I am now, just sit up nice and straight so your spine is long, shoulders are relaxed. If you're sitting on a chair, put your feet directly under your knees. And um, so you're sitting not slouched and comfortable, but in a way that makes you pay attention in an anatomically neutral position. So your head is balanced um, over your... Um, hips, your ears are parallel to the floor, so your head's even, you know, just find a nice neutral, even seat, somewhere where you can be as still as possible for the duration of the meditation and sit like that. So if you, you know, attempt to sit cross-legged on the floor and you're hunched and you're like, this is painful, then sit up in a chair or sit with your back against a wall to make it easy for yourself. As long as there's length in your spine, you are gonna be more successful. And um, you want to find that sweet balance of being comfortable and easeful and also alert and, and attentive. Um, and that brings us to the next point of staying awake. Um, <sighs> how do we stay awake? Well, for some people it'll be easier than others. There are some studies I've read that shows the majority or a large percentage of people are under sleep. In other words, we're all a little bit tired. And so sometimes as soon as you start to relax, you get sleepy. I remember I had a one-on-one a -on -one meditation client once who came to my house, drove 45 minutes from where they lived to my house, paid you know, good money for this two hour consultation and couldn't stay awake. <laughs> and I'd be saying, let me show you this breathing technique, you know, and every time I'd say, okay, close your eyes. She just straight away start like drifting off and doing the big head nods. And she said, I can't help it. This, you know, your voice is calming and this atmosphere and we live near the beach. And she's like, I can hear the waves. And, and we couldn't do anything because anytime uh, she closed her eyes, she'd start nodding off. And so I had to actually say, right, jump up on the bed. I'm going to go. Uh, I'll set the timer for 15 minutes. Um, I closed the door and just, I said, you just sleep and I'll come back in 15 minutes and wake you up. So she had a power nap basically and I came back and I woke her up and then we were ready to get on with the rest of the session because she was able to have a power nap. So the first thing is sometimes people are just tired. They're like, why can't I stay awake in meditation? Sometimes you just need a nap. And sometimes you have your best meditations just after a nap because you're relaxed, but your mind is ready to be present. The other thing to um, note is that if, this is something that happens all the time too, right? If the only time your body and mind has ever deeply relaxed, in your life is in deep sleep there's a familiarity or a connection with relaxation and sleep so if you start to learn these meditative techniques and your um and sorry i just turn the sound off that if it doesn't bing again um, you start to learn these techniques and get really quiet and still and relaxed your mind naturally goes oh it must be time to fall asleep now and you start to start nodding off. So it takes some practice to decouple um, deep relaxation with sleep. So you can be deeply relaxed and still and gooey and in a rejuvenated, you know, inner atmosphere of just relaxation and alert and awake and attentive and present. That's something that um, is a practice. So, you know, be, uh, be easy with yourself if you find it hard at first and know that's completely normal and completely natural. Um, let me just see if there's anything else here I've missed that I wanted to share with you guys at this point.
Oh, so when you come to the sessions, bring your pen and paper. Um, all of these sessions are just gonna be me. They're very candid. This is just me in my sister's house, uh, filming on an iPhone and, you know, I'm just doing one take, no editing, nothing. I know that that's possible just because I've been doing this for so long that, um, yeah, I can do that. So I'm just gonna sit here with a cup of tea, hang out with you guys, have a chat, um, and bring your pen and paper because I'll just, I'll write notes and um, diagrams and things on my wonderful flip chart here. And if there are any things that you wanna remember or take note of, you can, um, yeah, you can do that. And of course, you'll have access to the videos and the recordings for a good amount of time so you can always go back and watch things again but yeah i recommend bringing your pen and paper to take notes because it's also been shown that when you take note as you're learning it increases your capacity to remember the things that you are learning um, and other than that i recommend practicing at the same time each day if it means like for wait what am i trying to say um you're better off practicing at any time if it means you get to practice once each day, but if possible, practice at the same time each day because your nervous system gets in a rhythm and a routine and an expectation of what's coming and it only gets deeper and better and deeper and better. So if it's possible, see if you can choose where you're gonna meditate and at what time you're gonna meditate each day and do your best to stick to it just for these 28 days and then you can reassess after that. It's really cool as a human to make a commitment you know, to work towards something and go, this is something I'm committed to, I'm gonna give it a go for this set period of time. We don't do that often enough. And it's really empowering and clarifying when we commit to something and see it through. So, you know, same time, same spot, each day for 28 days, that's all I ask. Um, it's gonna be simple, they're not complicated practices at all. And they'll start from around 10 to 15 minutes and after the four weeks move to about 15 to 20 minutes. Easy peasy. And you know, my sincere hope, my sincere hope is, we can't learn everything about meditation in four weeks, but I wanna give you the fundamental, the fundamental principles. And I hope that you can integrate them and they can have a significant ripple effect out into your life changing the way you feel about the world you move through, changing the way you feel about the skin and the body that you're in and your reactionary tendencies and the levels of stress and anxiety that you carry from day to day and just your connection with your heart and the truth and the depth and the authenticity and the beauty of who you are. That's what meditation can do. It's what it's done for me and thousands of clients I've worked with before. And I've never actually ran, believe it or not, a beginner's focused course like this. And so I feel stoked, I feel honored, I feel privileged, I feel this pleasure. And for you taking time out of your life to sit here and listen to me waffle on and, and share these things with you, I'm, I'm just so stoked. So let's do it, let's get after it. I know that such is the nature of life, what you put in is what you get out. So I just wanna really, really encourage you to if you're gonna do this course, then it doesn't take much, but it does take something. That conscious effort is the thing that'll bring more effortlessness in life. And the conscious effort to practice stillness is the thing that leads to inspired, efficient and effective action and relating in the world just like we're spearfishing. So this is the introduction video. For those of you who have already signed up, go ahead and dive straight into session number one, talking about stilling the breath. Have a bloody wonderful time. And for those of you who are watching this introduction video and haven't yet signed up, um, yeah, it'd be my pleasure, absolute pleasure to have you and if you have any questions then you know where to find me to to reach out i'm super happy to converse and um help in any way that i can all right so i think that's about enough rambling on for now i think you've got the basic premise the basic principles how to go about this particular course so when we start now we can just dive straight in and get to it big love you bunch of legends 
and have fun. And I'll see you in the next video. You.